Hey guys, I thought this also might be a good time to talk about anytime you're doing a complicated project where it has to be perfect. It really helps to make drawings just to get your mind straight and to know what you're doing. And then if you're using router templates, you're going to get an, an additional amount of accuracy because I don't know if you can see that, but a saw blade, even a nice saw blade, is going to leave marks. And these marks are not going to allow you to get a perfect seal. The difference between building a reservoir and just building some attractive piece of plastic that sits there is that a reservoir has to hold water or a guy could lose you know, thousands of dollars worth of expensive gaming hardware in a flood. You know what I'm saying? So every reservoir I make, I put a lot of effort into it to make sure that, the, that all the joints are completely watertight. I test it for a long time. But in the process of building it, you have to take certain care. And the only tool that's really going to get you a true 90 degree edge, it, it, close, close, is a router. And then do light block sanding using a fixture so that you're getting a true 90 degree edge. Because the thing happens is that when you're gluing everything up, if your reservoir is leaning a little to one side, your front or back isn't going to line up. You know, and if, and if you're putting captive parts like in this case I've got a top and a bottom that are trapped by the sides and I did that for a reason but the thing is is that is is if that tops a little low in one place and a little high in the other and sticking out that's no good even if it is watertight it's still not perfect there's a lot of ways to go wrong with, with these six pieces that make the exterior of a reservoir so every part of the process has to be controlled and you have to have something helping you out while you're going along. And I start with making a very precise drawing so that I have a good idea of what my parts are going to be in terms of dimension. But I actually have to get out the calipers and measure thickness. For instance, I don't know where people get the idea that anything you buy is what they say. For instance, if you buy a 2 by 4 it's not 2 inches by 4 inches. It's an inch and 5 eighths by about 3 and 5 eighths. And it depends. It depends on the moisture content and how it was stored. But that's what you get. And it says S4S, but that doesn't mean that those are ready for paint. S4S means surfacing four sides. It just means it's been blasted through a planer and it doesn't have any you know, saw marks on it. It has planer marks on it. Still have to sand them out. It's similar when you're getting plastic, you know, I buy quarter inch cell cast, the most expensive, best plastic you can buy. It is not a quarter of an inch thick. You know, it's, it's around 0.2 something. This particular piece, when I measure it in one area, I'm seeing variations in thickness. Okay, so this is, in a microscopic level, irregular. It looks perfectly flat. It looks perfectly the same dimension from one to the other. But if you get out your digital calipers, you'll find out that it's not. And this is about 5.5 millimeter is what this is, okay? Although certain parts of it are closer to 5.7. Some parts are, you know, right on 5.5. So, things like this may not seem like a big deal, but when you're talking about trying to have a regular width, which would be exactly the width of an optical drive, and you're trapping parts, you can't have, like, too wide or too narrow. It just doesn't fit right. Not only that, but you can't have this and this to be two different dimensions because if you have any kind of taper, any kind of angle to the sides, anything, it prohibits that perfect regular 90 degree construction, which is absolutely essential for good glue joints. You can't have a piece leaning. You can't have a piece tilted in. You can't have pieces that aren't aligned perfectly this edge to this face everything is so precise that you have to really dial yourself in and study it and know what you're going to be building and have no errors as you go along or else you basically throw the piece away and start again so that's that's the way acrylic reservoir building goes at least for me you know there may be some people and just slap one together and with their eyes closed but for me I spend a lot of effort and time making sure it's going to work out for my customer so let me get started on this guys. I've got drilling to do and then I've got to do testing and make sure it fits again. Make sure everything's right. And then I've got lots of routing which is not fun to watch. You guys won't enjoy that. It's loud, it's noisy, it just makes a bunch of chips. And then there's a lot of tedious block sanding. 
okay, to get every edge perfectly smooth. Okay, no saw marks, no router marks. Get it flat, ready to glue up. Then finally, the part that might be interesting to watch would be the actual assembly and gluing. Because you you know, you have one shot at it. Every one every time you touch that applicator needle to the joint, you've got one shot at it. And if it doesn't work out, then that's it, it's junk. Alright guys, so more on the reservoir project. So